Kasugarada is your typical teenager who wakes up, gets breakfast with his cousin Hijiri and heads out to school. On their way to school, Arata notices a change in the color of the sun from red to black. Right after, he sees an invisible person walking by them on their way, telling him to wake up or she will end his life. At school, Arata still thinks about the sun and asks Hijiri about it. She says the sun has always been black, but he remembers the sun being red from a drawing she made when they were younger. He then figures that Hijiri is not his cousin but someone else posing to be her. Their discussion was cut short by Asami Lilith, a mage who tells Arata about an event that happened three days earlier and swallowed up his world. Arata remembers when the black sun occurred and people were consumed but he was saved by Hijiri, who gave him a necklace that saved him. That necklace is a grimoire that grants his wishes to return the world to what it was. Unfortunately, he also learns that the fake Hijiri is a mage, and all he has is an illusion of the wish he has made. Lilith gives Arata two options, to give his grimoire and forget everything, even about Hijiri, or she will take it by force and kill him. Arata picks the third option, to become a mage and save Hijiri, who's in another world. Lilith takes Arata to her school full of mages and introduces him to the headmaster. The headmaster tells him the school is to help investigate the mysteries and oddities of magic. He asks the headmaster if he would be able to get his cousin back through magic, and the headmaster tells him it is possible. The headmaster tells him about the school's boss characters, the Trinity Seven, a group composed of seven mages who have respective fields they excel. He is told that Lilith is one of them, and he should get to meet the others to understand all he needs to know about mages. Later that day, Arata meets Kazama Levy, a ninja, and Eren who looks like Hijiri. Both of them are part of the Trinity Seven. At school, Eren follows Arata around, and when he confronts her on why she does, she claims she is the chosen bride of the Demon Lord. Afterward, he meets Levy, Lilith, and Selina in his room. They tell him they are there to interview him but instead, Arata tells them to teach him magic. He learns that his grimoire is called a still codex and that it has the knowledge of another world. While in the room, they get trapped in a barrier. Unable to find a way out, Arata's grimoire tells him to think of it as a game testing ability and look for a way out. The girls in the room became uneasy with an urgent need to use the bathroom. Arata decides to play a trick on the grimoire by telling him where the clue to breaking the barrier is, which works. Arata's grimoire asks him which thema he would pick, and he says he doesn't know. Eren walks in on him and tells him the thema is a subject of research a mage devotes their life to learning, and while they execute what they learn, they use their magic as spells. He asks her if she was the one that put a barrier in his room, and she says yes. She did it because he is the demon lord candidate, the boss of the bad guys, and because the headmaster asks her to do it to see if he would have a meltdown which will cause another phenomenon. Eren puts her palm against Arata and enters into mage mode. This immediately breaks the phenomenon, and the magic in Arata begins to consume him. Eren tells him she wants to see what lies beyond their reality. Two other trinities, Mira and Akio disrupt the moment. Mira uses her magic and Thema, Superbia, to neutralize the spell cast by Eren. Mira instructs Akio to destroy Arata since he's the source of the breakdown so that they can make everything go back to normal. Akio kicks Arata to vanquish the evil in him, and he finds himself being pulled into another world by Yui, a particular type of mage who is a part of the Trinity Seven but rarely comes to school but can only be spoken to in dreams. Yui shows him the destruction happening in the school and tells him he would need to pick his Thema from one of the seven deadly sins to be able to control his power. But, he says since Mary used Thema Justivia against him, he would prefer to go in the opposite direction. He returns to the school and chooses Thema Rule. He connects to the Superbia archive and uses his Thema to compel the breakdown to dissolve and dispel the magic discharged by Mira. After the breakdown, the headmaster sends all the students to the southern part of the country to enjoy themselves. At the same time, he uses his powers to repair the school. Arata shows his Magus mode to Selina, including the part that strips people naked after dispelling magic. Levy and Selina listened in on Lilith and Arata and were shocked to see they only discussed what he needed to do to get his cousin back. Arata gets in a mixed bath with the girls. Selina encourages him to know how to target his magic directly at one person instead of stripping everyone around him naked. Arata begs Lilith to show him her thema, maybe he will be able to know how to understand his magic better since he developed his thema by looking at that of Mira and going in the opposite direction. Lilith shows her magic to Arata, and the girls discover that he can use the magic of all mages. All he needs is to see it, his grimoire will copy and rewrite it to suit him. Lilith tells Arata not to steal anyone's magic but instead to take his time to learn and understand the magic process. On returning from their bath, they discover all the students with medium-level magic asleep. They find out this is caused by a breakdown of Yui's power running wildly from beneath the school where she resides. Arata asks about the labyrinth where Yui lives and learns that she's the strongest mage in the school after the 
the headmaster. However, he understands that her power is dangerous and can make the world slumber, which is why she lives in a dream world. Mira and Akio search for the breakdown and the others go ahead to look for Yui before Mira gets to her and kills her. On getting inside the dungeon, Mira and Akio meet the rest of the guys. Levi and Akio fight while Lilith, Arata, and Eren run off to Yui's room, where they meet a dragon that materializes beneath her. Arata's magic resonates with the dragon, and he begins to take the form of a dragon. Eren tries to shield him from the dragon's fire but gets knocked out. The rest of the team joins them, and they all make a truce until they fight the dragon off. Levi helps Arata control his powers while the others engage in the fight. Akio is kicking the dragon, Lilith shooting her gun, and Eren using her spells, all while Levi encourages Arata to fight and get stronger to find Hijiri. Levi engages the dragon with her kunai while Lilith teaches him some magic lessons, while also explaining that if he loses control of his magic, he may turn into something worse than a dragon, all because he is a demon lord candidate. Levi injects her magic into his finger, and he summons a gun to destroy the dragon with a single shot and save Yui. Later, someone breaks into the school, and Mira tells Lilith she feels the energy to be the same as it was in the library. Levi tells Arata the story of the library, two twins reading in the library, and the library's glass comes crashing down around them like rain. The elder sister disappeared after the incident, which happened six months before Arata joined the school. At the library, Arata sees Selina in a corner and approaches her. They are all thrown into an eternal library where they meet Lise, Selina's sister, the twin who disappeared from school, and the seventh trinity they have been looking for. They discover that Lise has turned into a bad mage and can steal power off other mages. She steals Selina's power and makes herself a demon lord candidate. Lise tells them it has always been her wish to be a demon lord, and that was why she joined the Grimoire's security so she could run research on everybody. She tries to convince Arata to join her to become an evil lord so that he can quickly get Hajiri back. She moves closer to Arata and kisses him to steal his powers, which depletes his magic. Then, she uses the magic of stripping people naked on the girls. But Levi and Mira deflect it, and Levi faces her while Mira tries to analyze her new strength to see what Thema to meet her with. After Mira analyzes Lisa's magic, she attacks her with a Thema from the Incendia archive, but it does not work on her. Levi uses her ninja strength to attack Lisa and cuts down her wings. Mira mocks her for not understanding the power she carries and compares her to a level 3 mage who knows nothing. Lise runs away when she understands she must research her new powers to face the group and take everybody's powers. After she leaves, the balance is restored, and they are back in the original library. Mira tells the group that she fears what might happen when Lise returns after mastering her power, and she feels they have to make Arata stronger before the next attack. Mira asks Akio to fight Arata so that he can understand how magic works and for him to control and learn how to copy people's magic following the required processes. Akio tells him that if he does not use his magic to strengthen his body, he will not be able to beat Lise. Lise returns to the school with shadows that consume students' magic, and she tries to analyze the headmaster and wonders how she can steal his magic for herself. Lise's new strength enables her to see the headmaster's grimoire, Solomon's Gate which can only be seen with people with extraordinary powers. Lee slaps the headmaster away after he falls to her seduction, and she heads toward the other girls. There her sister, Selina, proposes for her to change her evil ways if Arata can defeat her. Arata continues his practice with Akio when the grimoire releases its human form, the Astil Codex. The grimoire is called Sora, and she shows him how he can use and conceal other people's magic in the grimoire. Arata and Sora go to meet Lee, and he takes his powers back from her when he summons a dragon that bites Lisa's arm. But Lisa's magic returns to normal when he gets distracted talking to the others. Arata charges toward Lise, but his speed is unable to march hers. Lise realizes that touching Arata does not affect him. Hence, she changes into Magus mode and into the Lost Technica archives and enters a new world to control time. Arata knowing fully well that all Lise wants is to acquire power, puts Akio's mantra on his tongue for when Lise wants to kiss him again. This mantra weakens her and makes them defeat her. After winning, Arata convinces her to abandon her evil ways and go back with them because everybody wants her back, but she says the type of magic she did has her stuck in the world alone. He also learns that it is the same type of magic his cousin Hijiri did to save him. Lise gets stuck in her world alone, but Mira asks Selina to teach Arata how to master the Logos art so they can get Lise back from her trapped world. Arata begins to study all there is to know about magic, but Lilith starts to worry that he is putting too much effort into learning so many things simultaneously and, if not correctly controlled, can turn into a monster. The headmaster summons Lilith, Mira, Akio, and Arata into his office. He tells them he wants to send them to the Royal Liber Magic Academy to inspect what happened to the recently destroyed school. 
He promotes Arata into the inspection division and tells them to tell him all he needs to know before the inspection. Arata learns of all the Trinity Seven's archives of their respective field of the Seven Sins. Lilith offers to be his tutor and he realizes that her deadly sin is lust. But in reality, she believes that all things sexual should be done modestly. Mira and Akio tell Arata about the Great Magic Academy and tell him their work is to investigate the reason for the breakdown. The headmaster teleports them to a spot close to Liber Academy, but someone tries to interfere with the system. The break-in transmission brings them to an entire Liber Academy that is not destroyed. After the break-in transmission, Sora, Mira and Arata are met by an Iliad fragment of Hijiri, who took care of Arata while Hijiri was gone. On entering the school, they discover that it is not in ruins, but someone has tricked them there and put a barrier spell around the school to ensure they cannot escape. Mira tries to use her powers and realizes that is also not possible. Arata and Mira hide in a classroom away from shadows who absorb powers while Sora faces them. Sora finds Ilya responsible for the barrier, and she traps Sora in a cube. Mira and Arata climb to the roof of the building to look for the core of the barrier so that they can destroy it and set themselves free. At the top, they see Sora in a box sealed away. Mira and Arata get surrounded by shadows, but Arata negotiates with Ilya to leave Mira alone and have him. She agrees, but while Arata leaves the spot to meet her, the shadows crowd around Mira and she tries to turn Sora into an energy sap. This makes Arata angry to the point where all his magic consumes him, and he becomes the true demon lord, the Astral Trinity. After taking the form of the demon lord, Arata takes over Ilya's kingdom and breaks free Mira and Sora. Mira and Sora save him from his demon lord power by returning him to his true form with a slap. Arata tries to reason with Ilya to be friends with her, and everybody joins hands together to destroy the black sun created by the Astral Trinity. They find their way out of the barrier and back to the front of the school, where they meet Akio and Lilith. Akio and Lilith help them to a resting place where Mira tells them about Arata becoming the Demon Lord. She tells them Ilya helped them break the barrier out, and she believes Hajiri is behind all the plotting. Hajiri visits Arata while he's resting and tells him they are now enemies and she will need to kill him. Lilith comes in and disrupts Hajiri's plans, but Hajiri is bent on killing Arata, and she manifests into a demon lord candidate wearing three different armor. Hajiri blasts toward Arata and Lilith runs towards him. He screams, and Aaron comes in his defense, freezing time and space and holding a Eskathiach spear that can be used to neutralize Hajiri's magic. Akio and Mira join in to fight Hajiri, but she leaves them and goes to the school, which is left unprotected. The school is faced with danger when Hajiri's companion, Lug, attacks them. Levi meets Lug while Yui uses her magic to create a dream world to protect the students so they are not affected by the attack. Levi attacks Lug but finds it hard to keep up with her because she is as fast as lightning. Levi creates an illusion of using her last crest for Lug to see and runs away. Lug looks for Levi and begins to fight her. She crushes Levi to the point that Selina leaves the dream world to support her. Selina puts Lug in a bind, but she breaks free from it and destroys Levi and Selina. After dealing with them, she wants to face the headmaster but is interrupted by Lise who Selina connected her body with and brought back from her world. Lise and Selina bind Lug, but she manages to get free and attacks her, only to fall into a trap. Levi attacks her from behind and attacks Lug with several strikes. Lise and Levi ask Lug to leave them alone, but she is joined by Hajiri, who advises Lise to join them in their mission to destroy the world. Yui joins Lise and Levi, and Hijiri decides to destroy the three of them but is interrupted by Arata and the rest of the Trinity Seven members. Lise thanks Hijiri for the warnings and tells her she would rather stay with her friends, the Trinity Seven, and Arata tells her it is time for them to fight. Everyone taps into the FEMA to fight. The Headmaster and Master Liber watch as they engage each other, but the Headmaster says he cannot join because he's a paladin, and his power can destroy the world. Yui and Akio join forces against Lug and take a little dominion over her. Levi and Lise attack Hajiri together, but she creates a channel around herself that no one but Eren can penetrate. So they try to make an opening for Eren to launch an attack against her, but Hajiri, aware of what they are about to do and shields herself against them. Unknown to her that Levi has another plan to teleport and switch places with Eren so she can attack from another direction. Eren attacks Hajiri and calls on Lilith and Arata to go next. Lilith and Arata join forces together and use her gun blast and his magic to blast away her powers. They were victorious over Hajiri and Lug and she tells them how she was trying to prevent history from repeating itself. She didn't want to see Arata become the evil Trinity Lord who destroys the world while controlling the Trinity Seven. Arata tells her he will ensure he will control his own future and won't use the Trinity Seven to destroy the world. Hijiri dies, and her spirit goes up but is saved by Master Liber, who's the person plotting against Arata becoming the Demon Lord. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.